Hello yogis and welcome to the next video in your seven day plant power yoga challenge. Thank you once again for joining me in this challenge and today's practice is our Akimsa or non-violence practice. Now if you aren't familiar with the word Akimsa, um, it does mean non-violence, what I just said before. And today's practice is all about finding the ways to incorporate non-violence within our lives and within our practice. So if you aren't familiar with Ahimsa, and I'll talk a little bit more about it before we go into our physical practice, but if you have read the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, uh, you'll know that Ahimsa features in these sutras, and Ahimsa is one of the yamas of the eight limbs of a yoga practice. So there's eight limbs of our yoga practice, and the yamas and niyamas are the first two. Now, yamas mean our restraints on our behavior. So the yamas that are listed there mean things that we do in our everyday lives that we might be able to adjust accordingly so that I guess we're living with our values. And Ahimsa is one that I really align with my values in veganism and the way that I live my life in trying to cause uh, no harm to animals specifically. Um, or no harm to the environment around me. So Ahimsa simply means uh, respect for all living things and avoidance of violence towards others. And in the Sutras of Patanjali, it says, when non-violence in speech, thought and action is established, one's aggressive nature is relinquished and others abandon hostility in one's presence. And when the yogi has thoroughly understood the nature of violence, he is established firmly in the practice of non-violence. Peace in words, thoughts and deeds, whether awake or dreaming, is a sign of goodwill and love towards all. So, letting those words wash over you a little bit before we start moving into a physical practice. And I'll pop that down beside me there. And I also wanted to read another little thing before we started. So I won't sing this, but it's a mantra. Lopa samasta sukhino vabantu. And that means may all beings everywhere be happy and free. And may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. Now again, when I hear that, I think the people around me, the animals around me, the world around me. That might translate differently for you and that's okay as well, but today's practice is going to be all about the way I've interpreted it in far and the way that I'll incorporate that into the practice. So I guess today might be a little bit more about finding out in an animal. So when we look at yoga and we, we can look at all the different shapes and poses, a lot of them are named after animals. And that's because early yogis were inspired by the things around them and a lot of those things were animals. And it's funny when you go through a yoga practice how many of those shapes are animal shapes. So today's theme will be a lot about animals and finding the animal shapes. So. It's a way to have a little bit of fun, but also acknowledge the big part that animals play in our lives. And so for today's practice, you might want to grab a block or a pillow, maybe something to sit on, just for a couple of the shapes that we'll be moving into. It might be a little more comfortable to have something a little higher underneath you to sit on. So if you want to grab that and then come back to your mat and we'll get started. And so if you've got your block or your pillow, or if you don't have one, that's completely fine as well. I'm going to come to sit on my block and then come to a cross-legged seat. And just any way that feels comfortable for you. You might take a little moment to adjust any of the little bits underneath you, any fleshy bits. And just find your comfortable seat, knowing that might look different for all of us. And once you have, you can start to flip the palms open. And just start to settle into this space. And having the palms open is a gesture of openness to the universe, maybe 
opening this practice to someone or something. And so letting the words of ahimsa or non-violence, letting them wash over you, what they might mean to you. Maybe how you already incorporate that into your life. Drawing some connection back to the body by joining the first finger and thumb. And if it feels comfortable to do so here, you can close down the eyes or keep a very soft gaze. And we'll take a few moments to settle into your body. Again, just always checking in with how you're feeling today. Already what might be coming up for you. Maybe starting to notice the breath. A gentle rise and fall of the breath in and out, your connection to your life. Prana, your energy, and how that affects the world around you. And taking three of the deepest breaths that you've taken all day today. Maybe in through the nose and maybe letting go of the breath out the mouth. Taking two more in your own time. After you've finished your breaths, just letting the breath come back to normal, flowing in and out. And you might start to gently blink open the eyes and starting to bring the hands up to our lotus mudra. So joining the heel of the palm together and joining the pinky finger and the thumb opposite pinky, opposite thumb together, and the rest of the hand is open. So open in this lotus flower mudra. And if it feels comfortable to do so, you can once again close down the eyes or maybe focus your gaze on your hands. And the lotus flower mudra draws from the purity of the flower that is above the water, but also acknowledges that it's drawn from the murky waters underneath. And for us humans, the muddy waters might be things like desire, fear, attachment. All of these things can sometimes make us lash out or get angry or even act unkindly towards others. And so letting the lotus flower represent that kindness within you, that non-violence, that ahimsa. start to release the hands you can lift them all the way up overhead letting the arms stretch long and then 
taking a twist over to the left side, taking the right hand to the left knee. Left hand can settle behind you. And then a gentle twist to begin. And then coming over to the opposite side, opposite hand to knee, looking over to the opposite side of the room. And then finding your way back to the middle. And then coming away from your block if you were seated on one, just placing that off to the side for the moment. And then coming all the way over to a tabletop shape. And start to untuck the toes, taking the hands underneath the shoulders, coming into our cat and mouth cow shape. And as you breathe in, you might start to lower the belly, back to the forwards. Breathing with the breath, you can exhale and arch the back. Tuck the chin towards the chest. Breathing in, lowering the belly. Sort of gentle cow shape. Breath out. Comes into your cat, arching. Letting go. Doing three more rounds. Option two. Close down the eyes. Breathing in your way. Last two rounds opening. And arching away. This last round. A big breath in as you open up into your cow shape. Maybe a big sigh out as you arch back to your cat. Coming back to the centre, maybe a little sway here. Doing what your body needs today. A little bit of movement through the hips. How can you act in a non-violent way to your body? And then starting to make your way down onto your belly. However you like to get there, and settling your way down onto the mat. I'm taking a couple of little cobra shapes here just to warm up through the lower back. Hands can settle underneath the shoulders, gentle through the fingertips and really pressing down through the tops of the feet. The kneecaps might even lift, getting the shoulders back. And taking a little inhale as you start to lift up through the chest, keeping the gaze down. Exhale, start to lower down the chin. Breath in, starts to lift. Breath out, lowers to the ground. Breathing in, last time rising. And folding back down. And then starting to walk the hands a little further forwards. Coming to your sphinx shape. You might take a little moment to adjust here on your mat. So letting the elbows sit almost just underneath the shoulders or a tiny bit further forwards. Stretching through the fingers. Arms are parallel to the sides of the mat. And once again, pressing down through the tops of the feet. Legs are active. Just taking a moment to pause here. Focusing on your breath. And we start to turn this into a little stretch. Start to turn the left hand so it comes parallel with the now the top of your mat. Rising onto the fingertips of the right hand, start to bend through the right knee. Coming into a frog shape variation here. So you might want to stay here if this is enough for your leg, or if you'd like, you can start to reach behind you for a hold of the foot. And then turn the hand so that your chest still faces towards the mat. If you're drawing your heel 
down towards your back of the leg. You're open through the shoulder, through the front of the body here. That left leg is still active. And gently acting with non-violence, start to release that foot all the way back down, coming back to your sphinx shape. And maybe just a little cat-cow movement here through the chest. So maybe a little open through the heart space. And that arch in the back, tucking chin into the chest. Coming back to the center. And then popping over side, this time right hand will draw energy, lift up onto the fingertips of the left hand. The left knee starts to bend. Reaching around, grabbing hold of the foot and then turning your chest back towards the mat. About three breaths here. Gently start to release that foot back to the ground, coming last time back to your stick shape. Maybe that cat cow movement opening and folding in. Coming back to the center. And then lowering your belly all the way down, hands come underneath the shoulders. Start to lift your way up to a tabletop. Pressing down through the hands, tucking the toes, lifting up and back, downward facing dog. An option to take your dog for a little walk here. You can start to bend through one knee. And then the other. Finding ways to incorporate some movement. And we can settle back to stillness in this dog shape. Maybe give your tail a little wag. Use the soles of your feet. Press down into the mat. Doesn't matter if your heels are lifted. And taking a breath in, start to lift through the toes through the heels, and then press the heels back down to the mat, a little length through the back body. Breathing in, lifting, breath out, reaching back down. And this time as you lift through the heels, start to bend the knees and look between your hands. And then start to take a little walk all the way to the top of the mat. Feet can be quite wide, a little wider than hip distance. Taking a little bend in the knees, maybe a chance to grab hold of the elbows, and sway from side to side. And staying quite low to the ground today. Drawing the feet back in a little closer to hip distance. Taking a halfway lift, fingertips can rise to the shins or knees, flat back. And then folding down. Taking one more halfway lift, Cardo Uttanasana. And then fold back down. This time lifting, just rising to the fingertips. And then starting to pick up the right foot. Extending it all the way back down behind you. And then lower down the right knee, untuck toes, lifting the arms to the sky, coming to your low lunge shape. 
taking a one full breath in here and a full breath out as you lower down the hands begin to tuck the back toes lifting and pressing back to a plank shape you take a little wiggle here with the toes finding your shape and then one full breath in, breath out, lower down knees, and tuck toes. Hug the elbows in as you roll your way down to the mat. Come into that baby cobra shape, like you did at the start on a breath in, lifting the chest, and folding down. Lifting it all the way back up, tucking toes, downward facing dog. Pausing for a breath. And on your next inhale, let me start to guide the right foot up to the sky. And start to draw that knee in towards the nose. I'm going to find that foot's way between the hands. Moving gently this time, the left knee. And then rising through the arms, lifting. One full breath in here, full breath out, hands come down, tucking toes, this time stepping forwards on your mat, coming back to that forward fold shape, taking a halfway lift and folding down. This time picking up through the left foot, again stepping it back. Coming down, untuck toes, one breath lifts the arms, breath out, folds back down, tuck toes, find your way back, your plank shape, pausing here for a breath, and then lower down knees, untuck toes, roll your way down to the mat, baby cobra lifting, and folding down. Up and back, down with facing dog. On your next inhale, left leg will lift to the sky, heel flex. Left knee comes towards the nose and find that foot's way between the hands. As you lower down right knee, untuck toes. Lifting arms for a breath in. And on your breath out, arms come down. Tuck toes. Step your way forwards to the top of the mat. Halfway lift. And then folding back down. Rising to the fingertips. Stepping the right foot back once again. Lower down the knee. Untuck toes. Arms lift on an inhale. Hold here for a breath. And on your next breath in, lift your little taller through the heart. As you exhale, begin to straighten through the front leg, fingertips come down. Your half Hanumanasana or half monkey shape. We'll take three breaths here. Pulling back through the toes. Becoming a little softer through the fingertips. And then as you start to look towards the toes, start to read in through that front knee. Hands frame the foot, tuck toes, find your way back to your plank shape. An option to keep going with the variation we've been moving through knees to chin, baby cobra. Or if you'd like, you can move through your chaturanga and upward facing dog. Or lower knees, come down, and then lift yourself into your upward facing dog, opening through the chest. And then finding your way back down with facing dog. Next, breath in, lift right heel to the sky. 
bending the knee towards the nose, stepping that foot between the hands, lower down the knee, on a breath in, arms lift. And then next inhale, lift a little taller. As you exhale, straighten through the front leg, fingertips come down, straightening into your half Padmanasana, your half monkey shape. And holding here for two more breaths. Softening, acknowledging the shape. And start to breathe in through that front knee. Hands bring the front foot, tuck toes, stepping forwards. Forward fold. Halfway lift. And softening back down. This time picking up the left foot, reaching back. Lower down left knee, untuck toes, arms lift, low lunge. One breath in here, breath out, straighten that front leg. Taking a little halfway lift, rising to the fingers on a breath in. And on your breath out, folding forwards. Breathe in through the front knee, frame the hands around the front foot. Tuck the toes on the back as you step back. Your plank shape. One breath in. And your flow here, lowering down to the mat. And your choice is back then. Finding your way up and back to a downward facing dog. Last round, your left foot heel lifts to the sky. Drawing knee into the nose, finding that foot's way. Through the hands as you lower down right knee, untuck toes, breath in, lifting. One full breath in here. Full breath out, straighten through the front leg, hands come down. Little halfway lift, rise into the fingers, one breath in. Breath out, soften here. And as you breathe in through that front knee, hands come forward, stepping forwards, forward fold. Halfway lift. And then folding all the way down. And then taking the heels a little wider than your hands. And then come to sit all the way down onto our mat, finding your way down. Coming to maybe reach for your block once again here as we prepare for a little bit of a opening through the hips and some more animal shapes. You might once once again want to come to sit on your block or your pillow, whichever variation suits you best today. And then start to bring the soles of the feet to touch. And you can bring the heels quite close in towards you, towards the block beneath you. And definitely doesn't matter here if the knees aren't on the ground or resting anywhere. And coming into Vata Panasana or our butterfly shape. Your hands might simply rest around the ankles, maybe holding around the toes, or they might simply be resting on the knees, finding a space that's wherever comfortable for you. Taking a few moments to let the breath settle. Notice how your body feels in this shape. And if it feels okay here, you can stay exactly as you are or maybe start to fold your weight forward a little.
either you are focusing on your breath, acting kindly, If you hold it forward, you can start to lift your way back up. And I'm going to turn on my mat here so it's a little easier for me to demonstrate for you. But staying where you are on your block or your seat. And then start to take the feet a little further forward. So coming into more of a diamond shape with your legs. Pressing the soles of the feet together once again, lifting up through the heart space. And we're going to make our way into our tortoise variation. One of the oldest and most ancient animals on this planet. So if you'd like to come with me, you can start to fold the weight forwards here, and the hands simply might rest again on the feet, and the fingertips might be resting beside you. where you want to stay, or you can even start to walk the hands underneath the shins. Your hands can be down to feel a little more grounded to the earth. And simply folding forwards in whichever variation you're in for about five breaths. You had your hands underneath your legs, gently taking one out at a time. And all the way up once again. Just drawing the knees up, you can take your legs out and just giving them a little bit of a shake. And then starting to bring the feet back towards you, I'm going to once again flip around here. We move through our cat cow position at the start of the class and coming into another cow variation. And the cow is a very sacred animal in some parts of the world. It's a very gentle animal and, and one that a lot of cultures don't actually eat due to its religious significance. So we're going to move into the Gomukhasana shape or face of the cow. So starting to bring the right heel underneath you and towards the side of the block and the left leg is going to come over the top. You're going to sandwich the knees roughly on top of one another and then you can start to walk the feet maybe a little further out here so the heels don't need to be super close to you and if this doesn't feel comfortable in any way shape or form you can simply just come to a cross-legged shape once again. But if you'd like to come into this variation, finding your way here. And the hands might simply stay beside you. Taking a moment here in this shape. like to create a little bit of movement with the arms, you can start to lift the right arm overhead, start to bend at the elbow and taking the palm of the right hand to the mid back or upper back. And then maybe the left elbow bends and you might be able to reach and touch your fingers or just hold on to a piece of clothing or simply pressing the hands into the back. Taking one more breath in here. And 
start to take the left arm down, right arm down, pausing. We'll slowly start to make our way over to the other side. So uncrossing the legs this time, the left heel will come underneath you first as the right knee comes on top and then walking the feet out to a space that feels comfortable for your legs and if you want to come to that cross-legged variation once again just switching the cross of which ankle is in front. Your hands can come beside you here. Maybe staying as you are or on this side you might start to lift the left arm over the head, start to bend at the elbow as that arm can come down. And maybe bending at the right elbow, reaching up, and the hands might touch, they might not. Now that you know my hands aren't touching behind me here. <laughs> and just a few breaths. Releasing the right arm first, left arm comes all the way down. A moment to pause. And then releasing through the legs, through the feet, you can come away from your block. Once again, placing that off to the sides. And then starting to come down onto your back. Rolling down, extending the feet long. And our last shape before our resting shape will be Matsuyasana or fish pose. And you can start to walk your hands, palms down underneath your bottom, so that your elbows also come quite close to your body. And then flexing through the feet, legs are nice and active. And then pressing down through the hands, through the elbows, using that as your base as you start to lift through the chest. And then maybe starting to open up a little through the throat. And you can let yourself come down a little as the head might touch back down. Crown of the head to the mat. Those hands and elbows are your support. You're starting to lift your way back up, coming all the way down, and then releasing through the hand. You might give the hands a little bit of movement, a little bit of a shake, totally a little wiggle. You can take a nice big stretch with the arms overhead, reaching long. Well. Coming down to your resting shape here, letting the feet come a little wider here. Your palms can be face up. Letting the shoulders and the head soften. And a sense of kindness and compassion washing through the body. It'll be about a minute here of rest. without the sound of my voice.
start to come back to your physical body. Maybe some movement through the feet and the hands. The rock of the head from side to side. And then drawing the knees one by one up towards the soles of the feet on the mat and taking a rock over to one side. Resting here for a breath. And then start to find your way, find your way up to a seat. cross-legged position or however feels comfortable for you. And we'll finish by once again coming to that lotus flower mudra. And drawing the heel of the hand together, opposite pinky, opposite thumb come to touch. And simply resting in front of the heart space. Using this offering as a gesture of kindness and compassion to the world. And a gesture of non-violence towards any living being. And you can start to bring the hands all the way together now for our Darling Mudra. And bring the thumbs towards the third eye, space between the eyebrows. A moment here for kind thoughts. Bringing the thumbs to the lips, kind words. And then bringing the thumbs back towards the heart space. All kind actions. And you can bow forward towards your hands. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me again today for this practice. I hope you enjoyed that Ahimsa or non-violence practice, theme practice. I'd love to know how you're going with the challenge so far. If you want to drop me an email, you can find me at jess at plantpoweryoga.com or visit my website for more information if you're curious about what Ahimsa means. And I'll also pop some resources in this ebook in which you can investigate a little more about Ahimsa and non-violence and how they're all